Hey everyone, great to connect with you again today. This Sunday, we gather for worship outdoors at 8.30 and indoors at 10 o'clock. The 10 o'clock service will be streamed as usual. I'll be preaching from Psalm 148 about the gift of offering praise to God. Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, you're invited to a time of fellowship and ice cream and games in the north side of the church parking lot. This is an opportunity to connect with one another before we get into the rigors of the academic year and also an opportunity to welcome uh, Houghton Academy and Houghton University students who are already here in town. We hope you'll join us at 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon. I've been looking out my office window this week watching the mess that's developed on Route 19. Tuesday morning, a construction crew started tearing up long section of the highway, which meant that traffic was only one way, which meant that there were lengthy delays. There were guys carrying flags and signs with slow on one side and stop on the other. There was a lot of noise and machinery and a bit of horn honking and probably a fair amount of frustration of people sitting in vehicles. As I was watching all of this unfold, a thought came to my mind. Progress always comes at a price. Progress always involves a cost. When this construction is done, all of us will, who spend a fair amount of time driving on Route 19 are going to be really happy that it's completed. We're going to love the smooth road and hopefully the smooth transitions from side streets and driveways onto this new road. But in the meantime, it's a huge inconvenience. The road is difficult to drive on. There are delays that either make us late for things or just, quite frankly, irritate us. But this scenario reminds me of how often scripture tells us that in order to make progress in our journey with Jesus, we have to be willing to pay the cost. Jesus speaks to this in his reply to the rich man who asked him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And after some discussion about the commandments, Jesus says, sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then come follow me. Essentially, Jesus is asking, are you willing to pay the price to get to the end you're hoping for? Jesus speaks to this even more directly in Luke 14. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down, estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and you're not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Now, we might be tempted to think that spiritual progress can be experienced with minimal effort and investment, but that's a lie of the evil one, not the teaching of Jesus. When we think about the cost of following Jesus, often it's the price of surrender and sacrifice. It's the price of giving up our rights. It's the price of obedience. And often we struggle to pay the price. We love our rights. We love being self-centered. We love the world revolving around us and our needs and our desires and our concerns and our lives. On our best days, we recognize how shameful this is. But on too many days, all we can think about is how much we want these things to happen. The scriptures teach us about the upside down nature of the kingdom. That in order to be blessed, we have to embrace things like being poor in spirit and being meek and being willing to be persecuted for the sake of Jesus and yearning for righteousness. In order to experience the joy of our relationship with Christ, we must have the mind of Christ and respond willingly and joyfully to the admonition of emptying ourselves that we might be filled with the Spirit of Christ. In the face of the demands of discipleship, often we forget that this calling to pay the price is not a punishment, it's a gift. It's an offer to let go of all that holds us captive, to be set free from all that eats away at us, and to be filled with the joy of Christ flourishing in us. So if you're dealing with the delays on Route 19 this week or other similar delays wherever you are, remember the call of Jesus and give thanks for what willing, joyful surrender to this calling can mean for you and for me. Father, open our eyes to the joy of giving ourselves and all that we have to you. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful day.